You know it's a shame that the school curriculum forces us to read things in school that we really didn't want to read. This sort of trained our brains into believing that reading and learning is something that's done in a classroom setting as a chore. This is probably why statistics show most people after graduating are shown to read only one to four books a year. And according to the Pew Research Center, about 25% of American adults said they haven't read a book in the last year in any form. So that means no printed books, no ebooks, not even an audiobook. The problem with what schools taught us about reading is what they wanted us to read was irrelevant to us at that age. We didn't really care about reading and learning. That's a time we're way more concerned with like our image and our romantic crush. If schools would have forced us to read books about how to improve our image or get the person we're crushing on, most likely we would have valued that learning and reading a lot more because it's helping us in that moment. That's the way we really come to value reading. When we read something that can help us right now in our life, we read some kind of wisdom that we can apply right in this moment. And if we get results from applying that knowledge, even better. When this happens, it rewires our brain to love reading and learning because it's something that moves us forward and creates a better life for us. That's how we start valuing reading instead of looking at it as an obligation. And that's an amazing thing. When that happens, we quickly become addicted to the supply of knowledge because we know it can lead us to having a better life in some way. And that doesn't necessarily mean we're always going to enjoy it. That's different. Reading for pleasure is done by very little of us. Most of us don't read for pleasure. Even those that do read for pleasure, only a small proportion buys books. And of that small proportion that buys books, an even smaller portion buys hard books that will actually help them in life. And that's most likely not changing anytime soon. But what we can change is the value we place on reading and learning. We have to place value on being a lifetime learner. Get smart. To make your life work out worthwhile, you've got to have some ideas. You've got to have the information. So you've got to be smart. In fact, in this decade, you must be much smarter than you were in the last decade. You've got to read the books. You've got to come up with the information. When I have a chance to talk to the high school kids, that's the theme of my talk, get smart. There's nothing worse than being stupid. And if you will read the books, learn from your experiences, do all the things that you possibly can to get the information, sure enough, you'll be wiser this year than you were last year. And I've got a few techniques that I teach in my seminar on how to get smarter, keeping a journal, going to the lectures, going to the seminars, listening to the sermons, picking up ideas from other people. You just must keep up this steady process of learning. Never cease your quest for knowledge. Wisdom acquisition was a moral duty. It's not something you do just to advance in life. Wisdom acquisition is a moral duty. And, and as a corollary to that proposition, which is very important, it means that you're hooked for lifetime learning. And without lifetime learning, you people are not going to do very well. You are not going to get very far in life based on what you already know. You're going to advance in life by what you're going to learn after you leave here. Without Warren Buffett being a learning machine, continuous learning machine, the record would have been absolutely impossible. The same is true at lower walks of life. I constantly see people rise in life who were not the smartest, sometimes not even the most diligent, but they are learning machines. It's no secret that the most successful people read a lot. You've probably heard that saying, not all readers are successful, but all successful people are readers. If we went to every successful person's house, we would see that they have one thing in common. They all have a bookshelf or a Kindle loaded with books. Benjamin Franklin once said, From a child, I was fond of reading, and all the little money I had that came into my hands was ever laid out in books. Frederick Douglass said, Once you learn to read, you'll be forever free. Knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Warren Buffett, at the start of his investing career, read 600 to 1,000 pages a day. But I still spend five or six hours a day reading. I mean, it just, you can learn so much. I particularly love biography. Just, uh, you know, to be able to live the lives of these people that have been so, seeing so extraordinary, the lessons and the, you know, the discouragements they face, just everything about it. So I did, you can't get enough of reading. 
Bill Gates reads 50 books every year. I read a lot. Uh, there were always contests at the library in the summer where, you know, if you read 10 books, you got a little gold star. If you read 20, you got like two. And, uh, there were like five or six girls and I that would always read like 35 books and we'd see, you know, who could do the most. Elon Musk taught himself rocket science by reading and learning about it. How did you get the expertise to be the chief technology officer of a rocket ship company? Um, well, uh, I do have a physics background. That's helpful as a foundation. Um, and then I read a lot of books and talked to a lot of, a lot of smart people. You're self-taught? Yeah. Well, well uh, self-taught, yes, meaning um, I, didn't, I don't have an aerospace degree. So how, how did you go about acquiring the knowledge? Well, uh, I, like I said, I read a lot of books, talked to a lot of people, and, and have a great team. And again, it's really important to note that most of these guys didn't read for entertainment. Most people do not read for entertainment. It's something you won't enjoy. We should read books to be taught, not entertained. Taught how to solve the dilemmas we're having in life. There's no problem in life that someone hasn't experienced before us and wrote their solution to it in a book. I mean, at this point in time, there really is no new problems anymore. There's way too much written information out there. The toughest questions we have to ask ourselves can help be solved by a book or a discussion we hear about it. If you're going through a problem right now and you're not reading about it, you're definitely taking the hard path. Sometimes all it takes is reading one little thing that we can apply and it'll propel us to the next level. Books are great because we get to take the lessons that took others decades of research and knowledge and they put it in a book that we can consume in a couple hours. There's probably even information in there that we can apply immediately to our life and our happiness. I really think leaders are readers, that in order to stay competitive in today's day and age, if somebody has decades of experience and they put it into a book and you can sit down and read that in a few days, download decades in the days, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir for everyone's <laughs> watching, but that, that's, that's a superpower, right? That's a huge advantage. Books really are the best life hack we could get. We get to download the mindset, the philosophies, the consciousness of all these great, amazing people. The smartest ones, the wisest ones, the strongest ones, the most courageous ones. I mean, without a doubt, it would be way better to be around them in person. But for most of us, that's just not gonna happen. So the choice we're left with is to read their books that have their way of thinking sprinkled throughout it. And also important to mention is some of the greatest people are dead. But their ideas and their mindsets aren't they're left behind in books now the thing that got me motivated to start reading every day was when i saw this quote by ralph waldo emerson he said i cannot remember the books i have read any more than the meals i have eaten even so they have made me just like the food we eat will shape our body over time, the books we read will shape our mindset over time. We have to try and feed our brains with useful information every single day. Just like we feed our bodies with food every single day. And just like if we feed our bodies with bad food every day, our body's gonna reflect that over time by becoming overweight or unhealthy. What we feed our minds with will affect how we behave and our outlook on life. And the great thing about this is it's so easy to feed our brains with useful information in the times we live in now. Now we can even listen to books and learn during our down times, like our car rides throughout the week. I heard something from Brian Tracy a while ago that changed my view on car rides and down times in general. He said our automobiles are like universities on wheels. We spend so much time in them we can almost become an expert in any field within a few years. Ever since then, I would always listen to an audiobook, podcast, or some kind of educational interview on my car rides instead of just listening to music. Music's great, but you don't learn anything. Even now, I get most of my research done for these videos on my car rides throughout the week. You can basically do all of your research for a problem you're having by listening to podcasts and audiobooks about it during your car rides throughout the week. There's pluses and minuses to both books and podcasts, but both are definitely extremely valuable. I, I think that the two technologies have their advantages and disadvantages. The, right. the thing about a book that you can't get from a discussion is that a book is a book is like a portrait as opposed to a photograph. You know, a photograph, it's click, that's that. A, a, a portrait you layer on and layer on and layer on and work over on for weeks. You still have the same single image, but there's this depth to it. And a book enables you to think and then rethink and think and then rethink and so you can go deeper in a book than you can I would say in any other medium okay. but that doesn't mean you can't go deep in a podcast 
And it doesn't mean that there's no educational utility in 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 podcasts. Plus, there's audiobooks, right? And, and sure. people are listening to those. Well, that, like that was another yeah. question. Do you think that audiobooks are just as valuable as books? Oh, sure. Just sure. as good. Well, the thing about the thing is, if, if you can really read, you can read way faster than you can listen. Mm-hmm. So reading is more effective. Except that, and this is what's cool about podcasts, and and what's what's game changing about them, I would say, is. You can't read while you're driving. Yeah. You can't read while you're doing the dishes or exercising. And so that's why the podcast market, I think, has exploded. It's like, oh, look, I can make use of commuters. You know, people spend thousands of dollars a month in their time commuting. Mm -hmm. It's like, poof, all of a sudden you can make that. You can you can take a university degree while you're commuting, (laughs) essentially, you know, in terms of, of, of the knowledge that you can attain. One of the greatest things about books and podcasts is for most of us, it's uncomfortable to tell someone that they could be doing more. So because of this, we don't really hear that we can be doing more from many people in our life either. So the constant reminder from the books we read and the podcasts we listen to are our reminder that we can be doing more. If you're not into the habit of lifelong learning, start it as soon as possible or you will definitely be left behind. There is a race on today and you are in it, whether you know it or not. If you've not yet developed the habit of reading each day, attending seminars and courses regularly, and listening to audio programs in your car as you move around, somewhere someone else is doing this. And inevitably that person will win the race and you will lose.